All right, in this lesson, what we're going to do is take a look at tracks, takes, and cuts. Very simple lesson, but it's kind of the base of the entire motion blend workflow, if you will. Absolutely. So starting out, I'm just going to simply come over here to the Asset Browser, and let's drop on down and find motions, open them up. I'm going to come down here to Generic Motions, and let's come over here and grab Kicks, maybe. Drag that one in again, and let's just import all takes in. So now we're going to have a skeleton in here that's going to have some animation on it, doing some fancy kicks for us. So let's just go ahead and move this guy down. And as far as takes are concerned, we've only got one take in the scene. Okay. So now what I want to do is come over here to Motion Blend, and our attention is going to turn to this area right here. And this is known as our track list. Okay, so inside the track list, what do we have? Well, we have tracks, and tracks are divided up into two areas, as I said in the last lesson. We've got our take, okay, over here, and we've got our cut area over here. And at the bottom of the track list, we have our result. Simple enough. Well, right now, there's no models over here, so with no models down there, there's nothing that we can blend between, there's nothing we can work with cuts, etc., etc. No information in there that we can actually play with. You got it. So what I need to do is go ahead and put something down here. So to do this, what I'm going to do is grab my character and drop him in there, and I'm just going to come in here and simply spacebar and then right-click here on his hips, and then this will grab the entire thing. If you want to come over here to Viewer and come into Schematic View, and then I can go ahead and hit A to frame up the whole thing, you'll see that indeed I have selected from the hips down. I've got the rest of the entire hierarchy. So now let's just go ahead and come back over to Perspective. I just find it real quick and easy doing it from right here inside the Viewer. Now I'm simply just going to hold Alt and then left-click and drag down here into my Cut area. And now I actually have something going on down here. And not only that, look at this. I now have another guy that just showed up. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and drag forward. And you can see right now that this guy in green, well, he's animated, right? Right. Simple enough. But the other guy, he's just standing there. Mm -hmm. This is a ghost, okay? Okay. Well, all tracks have ghosts. And right now, this track is using Take 001, which doesn't have any animation on it. Okay. So he's just going to stand there. Going to stand there. So if I come over here and click on this drop-down box, this box, again, as, as I said in the last lesson, is called the Take box. From in here, I can select any take. And right now, there's only one real take with animation. It's called Kick. So I'll go ahead and select Kicks. And now, guess where he is? If you look real hard, you can see some blue going on up there. So he's actually matching our, our current skeleton. You got it. Okay. Is that pretty simple? It's very simple. And there's our actual range of animation that's going on right there. Cool. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and let's actually go ahead and talk about cuts now. So if I wanted to use all of this animation, I can just come down here and I'm going to click on Reset Cuts. And what this will do is now when I click over here, I can come and specify exactly what part of this animation I want to use. By default, the cut is going to start at the beginning of the take and it's going to end at the end of the take. And you can control exactly where it starts and stops by simply double clicking on the numbers over here. Okay? All right. And you may find it easy for some of you guys if you like to do a, a snap to frames. You can come down here to Options and turn on Snap on Frame if need be. And that way, as you click on your start and your end cut handles, as you can see I'm doing right here, you're not going to have to worry about any subframes. It's going to drag right out to where you need it to drag out. Get the idea, Zach? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this right here, these handles allow us to define an actual cut. This is what we're going to actually use from this take. Okay? Okay. That's the one that, as long as you get that basic idea down, Everything's really good. It's not like some nonlinear editors out there where you go in there and you simply cut off the beginning part and cut off the end, and this is what you're working with. You'll still see the entire range of animation, if you will, but you need to go in there and you'll use your little cut handles here to define where you want the result to be ready. Because look at this. If you follow the dotted lines all the way down, here is our actual result right there. Okay? Okay. All right, so... Some of the things we have now for working with tracks, if we come over here to the side, we have the ability to insert if we want to. Okay. Okay. So we can insert multiple tracks. We can also duplicate tracks. We can remove tracks. And if we want to, of course, we can reset a cut. You'll notice that we can control which track is active at the moment by simply clicking on it like such. And we can reset the cut for that specific track. Or we can do a reset all cuts if we wanted to. And so now both of these have been reset instead of just the one. And then I could come in here and I could start dragging out what area I want it to blend to. 
Makes sense? Oh, yeah, very nice. Okay, now at the moment, of course, even though we have two tracks in there and they both have kicks, we don't have any blending going on because this track, there is no offset between the two. In other words, there is no area to blend because you could think of this track right here as being completely masked by the first track. So all we get is the result of the first track. Right. But if I want to come down here and move this takeover, I could simply hold T, and this is going to give me a time offset. And as I click and drag it over, now I actually have a blend going on down here. And it's really cool because I get a nice gradient going from the first track up here, this take right here, you see the gradient occurring over to this take down here in the second track. And that gradient actually defines the interpolation between the two. Yeah, now watch this. I can use shift to drag back and forth, and I can also use control if I wanted to zoom in a little bit closer on the frames, which can be really handy. You'll notice I've got this line going on right here. Okay. It's actually a linear interpolation that's taking place. If I double click on it right now, there is the actual animation curve, the way that we're blending from the one take over to the other take, or you could say the one track over to the other track. So you can adjust this function curve, if you will, to change the way that it's blending between takes. You got it, to give you even finer control. Very cool. So let's just go ahead and come back over here to Motion Blend. And now I'm going to just kind of zoom back out a little bit just to kind of show how this works. Right now, if I look up here and I move, take a look at my ghosts. I've got a blue one, which right now is stuck to this guy, and I've got an orange one as well, and the orange one's back here. Now we're about to see some blending happen here in just a second. And here it comes. Actually, let's go with about right there. I'm going to hit T and drag this over to about right there. I could also just come over here, simply double-click, type the number in myself. I could also left-click on it and drag it left and right as well. Okay. Now watch this. Now as I drag here, here we go. Now we're going to start seeing this second track come to life. As you see, he suddenly started to move now. We're also going to see my blue ghost continue with whatever the animation was in his take, but our offset or excuse me, our result right here is going to have our main guy right here simply going back over, boom, into the orange one. Okay? I got gotcha. you. Now we're still blending. Still blending. And now we are now completely 100 in Completely in the orange one. You got it. Wow. Does that make sense? So what it's doing is the blue ghost is passing the character off to the orange ghost. Exactly. And the gradient in between is just determining the, the span at which you're doing that. You got it. Very so, cool. Quite interesting with all sorts of characters going on right there. But ghosts are really important, uh, very, very important. Because when you get into blending and you're looking really carefully from how the result is transitioning from one character over to another, it's, it's very good to be able to watch both of your ghosts, the one you're coming from and the one you're going to real carefully to see how the handoff is occurring. Right. And then, of course, when you're ready, you can simply come in here and you can come over here and turn the ghosts off. So now we can see just the result. So we can see how he comes over here and then he's just going to kind of stagger. Look at that. Now he's got a little sliding action going on on his feet. And he slides around, and then he's, got, he's kind of defying gravity a little bit. Right. And now he's defying it a lot, and now he's doing this little interesting pop singer type move. <laughs> and then finally, now he gets serious with a good kick at the end. And while it doesn't look all that natural, it's a really good way to illustrate the way that these blend together. Exactly. So now, focusing a little bit more on the takes themselves, if I wanted to come up here, and let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's say I didn't want this to start until... Let's say perhaps, I don't know, maybe right here. Then I could say, okay, I don't want this to begin until right there. And so now if I drag back before, there's nothing going on there. It's like I've cut this section out, basically. Right. I've defined my cut to be in this area. But the cool thing is, is you haven't cut it off permanently. It's still there at your disposal. You can go back and change your mind later and pull it right back out. You got it. So now as I continue to drag forward right here, and now maybe I want to do my blending down here. So I'll click, hold T drag this back to some other area. As a matter of fact, watch this. I could simply drag it out all the way, and now we can see this guy, he comes down right here, so perhaps I will go ahead and end my take somewhere right in there. Now let's come over here to my orange guy, and now let's find on the orange guy. In fact, let's go ahead and just move him over a little bit, maybe to about right there. So let's see. We can find a good place. Maybe I want to do the kick again. So this guy had, he was ended up here. He starts back over right there, so I like that. So let's do the same kick again. And so this time, maybe I want them to end about right there. So I can grab this guy. I can blend this over to here. So this, these, these are my cuts now. Right. So once I pass this area, that's it for him. So perhaps I wanted to take this and go just a little bit more back with it. There we go. So that we can go back more to a standing pose, uh, maybe to about right there. 
Okay. As always doing leaning. I'm not going to get too picky here. Right. And then we can get up here, and we now that we've got our two cuts defined, again, I'm going to hold T to offset, and then I can get in and start doing my blending and how I want the blending to occur over how many frames. A lot of control that I have. Okay, so we can get in there. Now, of course, right now I'm not using any sort of stabilization object, which is something we're going to talk about shortly. So what's going to happen is during blending time, we're going to blend back over to the other area, and we'll talk about that in the next lesson. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at something else. Now, we're, now that we're looking at ghosts and how ghosts work, what I want to do real quick is go ahead and let's come up here to characters. Let's come over here. Let's grab old Mr. Roger. And let's go ahead and import him into the scene. All right. So here he comes. Well, Mr. Roger, he's just the kung fu master. He's a mean dude, isn't he? You know, we should have thrown him on the old Buzz final animation a second ago and had him tumbling all around. You know, we still can at some point. That's true. All right, so here he is at the moment. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and switch back over here to Navigator, come down up under Characters. I'm going to double-click on Roger down here, and then come over here to Input Type. And I want him to be controlled by a character input, and I want that character input to be Skeleton. And so now you see we just snapped back here to the back, and I also want to go ahead and match my source. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and come back over here to Motion Blending. And now look at this. Mr. Rogers getting ready to go. Now, as we come in here and we start dragging, and let's see, where are we starting our animation at? Way on up here. Yeah, we are. Let's go ahead and just, as opposed to shifting everything, let's just go ahead and give ourselves some room real quick. Here we go. All right, so now we can see he's doing his little <laughs> thing, but watch this. As the result skeleton gets handed off from one character over to the other character, so does Mr. Roger. Right. That's what these eyes are. Hmm, kind of interesting, huh? These are called yeah. the viewer focus buttons. And right now, this is the one that is highlighted. Let's say I wanted to just keep a close watch on this guy right here. So as I come in here, he's the rendered layer or rendered track, if you want to look at it like that. Okay. So you can now really see the result skeleton really well, all the white showing up. But look at this. As soon as I get to the end, the blend, there goes our blend, there goes our result. Going back over to the other guy. But Roger's staying. But Roger stays. He's done. Now we're going to kick poor Roger in the back. <laughs> okay, so we jumped right through him. Of course, if we were to switch over to the second track being the rendered one, you'll see there's Mr. Roger. And finally, we always have the ability to make it the last track or the result track so that you can see what the animation is going to look like on the entire thing. So that's a really good way to go in and test each individual animation and see how they're coming along. Exactly. So that can be really handy. Okay, so in this lesson, what we've talked about is over here. Oh, a couple more things. Let's go ahead real quick and just to kind of wrap things up over here. You see the little teardrops down here. And what these represent are, are what are called, uh, phew, quick draw a blank, don't want to do that. These are our root selectors, there okay, our go. ghost root selector. And with them, we can select one, and when we move it, what we're doing is we're actually moving our ghost. Now, he's going to keep his animation. It's going to be relative to where we just moved him to. So take a look at this. Oh, wow, he gets so handed off way over he there. He gets handed he? off way over there. Not only do we have the ability to do that with that selected, of course, I could also come in here and then just simply hit my rotate tool, and I can rotate it as well. Oh, wow, check it out. Okay, so now look at him. Now he's coming on in at us. Okay, now we're, of course, still going to blend back off to this guy who's still going straight. So that can be really handy. Using your root selector, you can also double-click or spacebar click to select it so as well. So not to jump ahead too much here, but if you were to take the uh, the ghosts and move them a little closer to each other at their at their you know, relative start and end poses, you could really help get rid of some of that slide as, as Roger moves in between characters. You could, but I'm going to teach you how to use stabilization objects, and we can match pivot points to given objects, which is really nice. But now I know in a lesson coming up a little bit later that you're going to do, that's going to actually become a little bit important when you start working with poses and all. Okay. And we start doing cycled animation. Cool. So now what we've done is we've taken a look at the take box. Uh, we saw how we could switch takes. We're looking at time offset down here. We haven't talked about scale, but we have the ability to scale our takes as well, make them slower, make them faster. And then we can turn our ghosts off. We can come in here and make this be the renderable track or the rendered track. And then we could also come over here and use the, uh, the ghost root selector button to select the ghost root. All right, and then over here, we talked about the ability of coming in and inserting new tracks, duplicating tracks, removing tracks, resetting cuts, res resetting a cut, which is whichever one you're on at the moment, right. and then resetting all cuts. And um, let's see, what else? 
I think that pretty much wraps it up. I think that covers it's, everything, it's man. The whole idea of this lesson was just to give you a general quick overview of working with tracks down here. And with that, that's going to conclude this lesson. Thanks a lot, guys.